You know what's in common between a glycogen-filled fan of grains and energy bars and a carbophobe doing reduction while on a positive caloric balance thanks to keto when they meet at the gym? Proteins. No matter what approach to nutrition you are currently fascinated with, you can't not pay attention to such ingredient of your diet as protein. Plenty of us feel gains at the very sound of this wonderful word. There is nothing strange about that. One of the main roles of protein in the human body is the building function, which translates to such things as regeneration of muscles, especially those overused during intense strength workouts, the side effect of which are actually bigger muscles. Among the less quoted facts, protein amino acids, by working like antibodies, also influence our immunity. They are also used by the body to remove toxins, and their contribution is visible in nearly all of the body's metabolic processes. They participate as enzymes in catalyzing different types of transformations in the body. They transport hemoglobin, which carries oxygen. As receptor proteins, they participate in carrying nerve impulses. Despite such crucial role in the body and the topic being relatively well-researched, to this day, there are many myths reinforced in people's consciousness. Although it is 2023, plenty of people still believe that we only absorb 30 G of protein from a single meal, or that if you don't consume proteins every three hours, you enter catabolism, or that only animal-sourced proteins count in the balance of a well-planned diet. First and foremost, it's about the quantity. We're talking about the total aggregated body demand for this ingredient. However, the answer to the question, how much protein does the body need, is more complicated than it may seem at first glance. Daily protein demand is a resultant of at least several variables, which makes it a very individual matter. It is obvious that these values will be formed differently in a steroid junkie on a few grams of the stuff than in a statistical citizen who spends whole days in front of a computer screen. On top of that, World Health Organization gives different guidelines for pregnant or breastfeeding women or for old people and children. During and after diseases, the protein demand increases as well, in the former to create antibodies and battle inflammations more effectively, and in the latter to replenish the body mass loss caused by the disease. Even in terms of building physique, there is no universal, equally effective formula either. The most popular method is sticking to the mythical 2 grams of protein per kilogram of body mass, but if we want to be more specific, there will be different values for the mass building period when we take in extra calories, and for the physique recomposition period, and even more different for the reduction period when we are well below our caloric zero. It will also work differently for natural people and for those on supplementation when the protein synthesis opportunities are on a much higher level. When on doping, depending on what we take and its dosage, we can successfully consume proteins a lot or even a whole lot. Before I go any further, please subscribe to my channel and give a thumbs up for the stats. Thank you! What is interesting when looking through the publications on the topic of the most optimal value of protein intake for hypertrophic purposes, we may run into very different results. In 2010, in a study done on well-trained athletes who specialize in strength disciplines, it was shown that the biggest benefits in building mass are achieved when keeping the protein at 2.3 gram per kilogram of body mass. One year later, on the other hand, in a different magazine, it was shown that there is no real benefit in diets that exceed the amount of 1.8 gram per kilogram of body mass. Then yet another team of scientists came to a conclusion that an even lower threshold will be enough, as in 1.6 gram. This highlights the very individual nature of the protein demand in different social groups. Even for different sport groups, this demand will differ. The more calories we consume throughout the day, the more of different kinds of nutrients we provide our body with. In such case, the body can rely on a different fuel than protein to function, and proportionally a bigger share of it from the food may be used to synthesize new proteins. Thus, we may assume that in order to effectively build muscles on a positive caloric balance, all it takes is 1.6 to 2.2 g of protein per kilogram of body weight. The lower the caloric surplus, the closer to the upper limit you should be. For example, if you are building mass by eating 400 kilocalories more than you need, you should eat more protein than if you were bulking at plus 700 calories. If you are a beginner and still have a relatively low lean body mass level in your general composition, you can easily go with lower values as in around 1.6, 1.8 g of protein per kilogram of body mass. 
In order to build mass, you also need much less extra calories. Going further down that path, the less calories you consume, the smaller the fat and glycogen reserves for your body to use. Once it runs out of them, it will turn to the energy stored in the protein of your muscles. That's why during reduction, in order to minimize the losses, a well-trained person may easily increase the amount of protein to 2.7 gram per kilogram of body mass. An additional advantage of high protein intake while on reduction is the fact that it is very effective at blocking the appetite. And even in case of a study on very obese individuals, preparing them a diet that provides one third of the daily calories from proteins reduced their midnight snacking tendencies by 50% on average. I may now surprise plenty of you, but your body is able to absorb much more than 30 G of proteins per meal. In fact, it will absorb as much as it will be provided. The 30G of protein myth was likely caused by misinterpretation of the word absorption. If someone only understands the role of protein as the muscle building function, in a simplified train of thought they may assume that it is the only way the body may utilize such protein. Even though it is also energy storage, whereas a gram of protein provides the body with 4 calories which is similar to carbohydrates. This myth often goes hand in hand with another one about the necessity to eat six meals a day. This would mean that Hafthor Bjornsson in his prime, if he had to adhere to that rule, would have to eat below one G of protein per kilogram of body mass. It has been proven that eating a steak that contains 70 G of protein gives a better protein synthesis stimulating response than one that provides 30 G. In conclusion, you shouldn't worry too much about the amount of protein in a single meal. We all differ in size, speed of digestion, habits. The number of meals should be optimal for you and your stomach, and if you feel better eating three of them instead of six, then you absolutely don't have to worry about problems with absorbing proteins and converting the unused ones. A common controversial claim is that you can build muscle mass just as effectively on vegan diet as on a normal one. From the technical point of view, it is possible. It's a difficult task but in theory it's doable. Plant protein is overall of inferior quality compared to animal protein. It is characterized by harder digestibility, lower content of essential exogenous amino acids, especially leucine, and inferior overall balance of them. On top of that, some of the most valuable sources of plant protein provide us with a phytoestrogen cocktail in the package. When utilizing the diversity of plant-based products and their different amino acid profile, however, it is possible to get meals with high biological and nutritional content, which is widely used when preparing vegetarian and vegan diets. When you are a strength athlete, especially an omnivorous one, you consume such amounts of food every day that it would be difficult not to replenish the daily balance of amino acids from plant-based products. That's why only counting the animal-based protein in the diet is another myth. Once again, please subscribe to my channel and give a thumbs up for the stats. Check also my other videos. This was Steel Shock. See you in the next video.